This synthesizer has taken me on a journey, one woven through great movie soundtracks of past decades, across sound design techniques used by legends of synthesizer design, and past a number of great synthesizers and gear from the last century. It has this air of limitlessness around it, yet it has several limitations that I wish it didn't have. It also has a unique workflow, definitely different from what I am used to, and sometimes slower than I would like, which makes it both challenging and oddly rewarding to use. Let's take a look at Hyperion. Full disclosure, I did receive a free copy of Hyperion from Paul, aka Wave Sequencer, but he has not seen this video and has no say over the content of this channel. Let's go. Well, Synthesizers have developed and changed a lot in the last 70 plus years. From the modular synths of the 60s to FM and vector synths in the 80s, the flagship synth era of the 90s and 2000s, and finally today where a handful of VSTs can provide you with nearly identical sounds from every single era. There are a lot of VSTs out there that can mimic specific iconic synths of the past. A few attempt to give you as many type of oscillators and effects as possible. And then there are those that are just different. And my take is that Hyperion is one of the latter. I think that Hyperion feels this way because instead of mimicking specific synthesizers, it attempts to capture a number of great moments in the history of the instrument and combine them into one product. And that is its superpower. Let's start off with the obvious, which is the modular synthesis boom of the 60s. At its heart, Hyperion is really a modular synth with its nodes and wires, and there are a number of patches that have the state azure slash tangerine dream feel to them. Funny thing is, I didn't even stumble onto an obvious TD synth sound until after having this for about a week. After running through about a third of the presets, my second impression of Hyperion was that this thing has an excellent 80s vibe to it. The new Groove Synthesis Third Wave, heir of the venerable PPG Wave 2 from 1985, was one of the first synths that I thought of. There are also a number of patches which sound a lot like the Korg Wave State or the Yamaha DX7. This isn't really surprising as there is a 4 operator FM node and a wave sequencer node for sound generation, but Hyperion makes it sound really convincing. With the ability to layer up to 16 patches, each with independent arpeggiators, Hyperion can also sound remarkably like those flagship synths of the 90s and 2000s, where you can set up one key combis that use aftertouch and the mod wheel to make some really involved and complex patches. definitely brings back great memories of holding down one key on a Korg Triton and sounding like a million bucks. Do not press the button. And if you want to try and mimic some of the great movie soundtracks of the past, Hyperion is pretty good at that too. I'm thinking that Paul is a bit of a movie buff.
Surprisingly, I also found that creating a fat and really analog sound was not too difficult, and I got lost in creating bass patches for several hours. Combining the tube resonator, vowel filter, and EQ distortion in different ways can get you some pretty creative dirty and fat sounds. Hyperion is incredibly deep, and there is a bit of a learning curve, but it's also highly rewarding as you unlock your understanding of the different oscillators, filters, and effects that you can combine. The workflow is different from pretty much any other synth that I use on a regular basis, and I like it a lot. It's also more intuitive compared to some other modular VSTs, because hovering over a connector node will reveal what it is, and if you are modulating that node, hovering over the receiver will show you the level. There are also a bunch of init patches that you can load up, which really help in figuring out how to connect different oscillators with filters, envelopes, and other basic functions. I've tried a few other modular synths in the past, and they were always a lot more confusing and definitely less rewarding to use. Patch creation isn't as fast as something like Falcon or Avenger, but there's something about hooking up the modular wires that gets me thinking in different avenues. I found myself going to bed the last several weeks asking all kinds of what-if questions, like, what if I run the granulator into the tube resonator, but match the random frequency of the grains to adjust tube length and radii? What would that sound like? Can I even do that? The answer is yes, and the next morning I didn't quite set up the patch 100% like I originally intended. But that's okay, because the results were still pretty awesome. setting up sine waves on octaves and fifths, with multiple voices running through different granulators, tube resonators, and vowel filters, each with different LFOs to add slight variation. Well, I started out with this in mind, but then got sidetracked again, and the results were this. Which is still pretty cool. And the takeaway is that Hyperion's wire and modular node architecture just invites exploration, and that getting sidetracked is part of the charm. It's kind of like Minecraft for musicians. You have a limited number of block types, but an endless map to build with. And in order to build something really complex and involving, you just need to keep building. If you are diving into a synth like this that's really deep, I like to recommend starting off with effects, because usually adding effects to existing patches is a pretty simple first step, and it quickly gives you a good feel for a wide swath of the sound design features that are available. Hyperion does not have the effects smorgasbord of Falcon, and some of the effects are missing some key elements. Like it would be nice if the tremolo had options for shapes other than a sine wave, and being able to adjust the phaser type would also be welcome. Although there are other ways to get around these limitations if you know what you're doing. Still, the included effects are high quality, and you can lose days of time just messing with the combination of the tube resonator and granulator. And granulating the resonator, and phasing different tubes into a granulator. Uh, I think you get the idea. Another big plus is the 4 operator FM oscillator that I mentioned earlier. It is so easy to use and adjust on the fly compared to some other FM synths that it makes FM patch creation fun rather than a chore. You just pick a preset style, adjust the knobs to the specific note that you want, and adjust the volume of each one as well. Then go all crazy and add ADSR envelopes and LFOs to get some really wild stuff. And then go super crazy and double or triple the number of oscillators, envelopes, and LFOs. Hyperion is not without its drawbacks, although a few of these have been greatly improved with the latest version to come out. Well, there's something you don't see every day. If you've been using Hyperion since its release, then you know that patch loading takes a significant amount of time. Well, that has been greatly reduced in the new version, which is excellent for speeding up workflow. 
And while you can easily run through the combi patches with the arrow keys, there is no way to do that with the single sounds when putting together your own combi. Thus, auditioning bass patches, for instance, can take a decent amount of time. Hooking and unhooking wires is also a little bit time consuming. It's easy to do, but if you've got a long chain that you need to rewire, it takes a little work. There are tools to help, including the ability to swap out nodes in place, and a new feature for auto disconnecting cables where you hold the shift while dragging the cable. It would be nice to be able to click on a wire, or maybe do something like a control click, and be able to add a node between two existing nodes. Another potential negative is that while you can add samples, there are no deep sample triggering and editing tools. While the basic controls are there, there are other better synths that will mimic a Rhodes or give you a piano with 12,000 velocity triggered WAV files. That said, it's pretty easy to do some fantastic things with a basic sample. A couple of things that I would love to see added are a 5 or 10 band EQ for better sound shaping. I suggested adding an EQ with a sweepable mid a few weeks ago, and lo and behold, a few days later, Paul added not only a sweepable mid, but also sweepable high and low frequencies, which is a big improvement for sound sculpting. Now if only there was a guitar cabinet module and a tape emulator to add hiss, wow, and flutter. Good! It's a little chilly in here today. So, do I like Hyperion? Absolutely. It's a beast. It sounds great and has excellent sound sculpting tools. While it is lacking a few things that I would like to see implemented, it's also incredibly versatile and it really nails some key 70s, 80s, and 90s vibes. It's not the fastest workflow, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it forces you to think through patch creation, which I think helps creativity. Or at least it does for me. If you are interested in picking up Hyperion, check out the link in the description. Hit that like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the other side of the mountain.